Imagine living in a world where most people have cool magic abilities, like having fire magic, being able to create tornadoes, have superhuman strength and speed. Then there's you, who only have the ability to make girls soak their panties. <laughs> now, if you're a part of the One Hand Haven community, this is how you'll react. <laughs> However, if you're a normal, functional member of society, this is how you'll react. I don't know if it's love or magic. Is a manga about magic. Thirsty girls and damped panties. Oh, and this charm ability that our protagonist is granted with could also make guys explode their pants and turn their classroom into a white room. This manga kinda reminds me of Mashal, because both the protagonists don't have magic in a magical world. The only difference is unlike Mash who smashes bad guys, our boy smashes baddies instead. Right, there's also a mommy in here which is about 95% of the reason why I decided to read this manga. The Seiryu Academy of Magic is a school that teaches students to become powerful magic wielders. Our protagonist Kaito is an absolute failure in life. He got straight Fs in everything and the teacher even asks why in God's name is he still here at this school. So our boy looks straight into the teacher's eyes and lets her know that he got his priority straight and he's here to riz up girls and catch them all like Pokemons. The teacher starts yelling at all the hatchling tier students and lets them know how terribly useless they are, especially Kaito. Now the teacher will need to be the first one Kaito catches, because holy good heavens, I would want to be put into detention with her so bad. Kaito is at the very bottom of the bottom. He's like a walking trash can, and he can't even use any type of magic. The teacher begins the class where everyone needs to find a type of magic that suits them. Everyone got into their Doctor Strange cosplay and tries their best to channel the magic within them. And our boy is trying so hard he can feel something coming out of him. But it was nothing more than his body letting out a silent fart. The teacher realizes that Kaito is always pushing himself harder than anyone else to the point he looks like he's about to pop a blood vessel or two. But he just can't do a single thing. However, the teacher thinks he should at least be able to do something because after all, the academy did accept him as a student. The girls in Hogwarts starts talking about how Kaito only wants to become a powerful magic wielder so he can create his own harem and live every isekai fan's dreams. However, the girls did not soak their panties upon hearing this and said they'll never even consider going out with him. Kaito tries his magic once again, and this time with the right goal in mind. He was able to summon a strong wind that gives him a sneak peek of the girl's Calvin Kleins. The boy starts cheering him and turns out they're the one who used the wind and blame it on our boy. And the girl starts running away while calling him a pervert. And a girl confronts him and asks, what is he doing? Kato recognizes it's Yui-ni. She starts freaking out over the fact that after obtaining magic abilities, the first thing he does is look at panties. The student recognizes it's Tengen Senpai and wonders why is she talking to someone like Kaito. After hearing this, Kaito quickly dashed out of there and she asks why did he run. He explains that since she's an eagle tier, it'll be a bad look for her to talk to a bottom tier loser like him. Tengen Yui is his senpai who's amazing in academics, sports, and magic. She's up there with the best of the best in the academy, and when they were younger, she used to train with him. She tells him it's just ranking and it's not that deep, and to cheer him up, she summons a huge load of his favorite fried chicken. Then she asks, was he being serious when he said he's learning magic to get infinite bitches? Our boy spits out his food after hearing this, and she remembers that he used to tell her he wanted to make it into Phoenix tier one day. That's why he wanted to train with her. However, our boy denies this and said he was just being naive, and since he's a teenage boy now, all he can ever think of are milk bazookas, long legs, women's abs, and nice round cheeks. Yui thinks he's lying because there's no way a guy would endure all that just for some titties. All right, so clearly, Yui does not know who Denji is. <laughs> Kaito walks away and reveals that Yui is right about his goal. He wants to become a Phoenix-tier magic wielder, and the talk about wanting to be popular with girls are all made up. It was only used as bait for people like me to read this manga. Kaito explains that he wants to become a Phoenix tier wielder because he made a promise with his childhood friend named Mai. They promised to become magic wielders together and he'll become a Phoenix tier so he could protect her at all cost. But till this day, the only thing he ever succeeded was getting a glimpse of women's panties. Then he sees Mai, 
and she's cute and popular with everyone in school. She's like a celebrity, and everyone calls her the Ice Queen. She's the youngest Phoenix tear wielder, an absolute prodigy. Kaito falls into despair thinking he's a clown to think someone at the lowest rank would be protecting someone like her. He might even be the entire circus to ever think that. He wonders how would she think about him if she sees what he has become. He sighs and thinks she most likely had already forgotten about their promise. And as he looks up, the two made eye contact and Kaido turns away in embarrassment and Mai still remembers him. Yui compliments Mai's skills since no one in her bloodline was able to use magic so it must mean she worked her ass off to be where she is. And if that's true, then it's not a lost cause for our boy. After hearing this, our boy can feel the anime protagonist's never-give-up spirit coming inside him and realizes it isn't the time to give up. Then he hears someone talking smack about Mai. It's Kiara-chan, and she's the annoying girl who thinks she's the absolute goat, and no one can match her and thinks Mai is a fodder to her. She is also massive on Instagram, and her ego is through the roof. However, her Instagram account isn't the only thing that's massive, because oh my good lord, I'm about to absolutely butt. Maybe she isn't so annoying after all. I apologize, Kiara-chan, I wasn't familiar with your game. But Kaito did not care. She alone could be carrying the entire bakery industry or have some basketball-sized milk dispenser. He still wouldn't let her disrespect Mai like that. Kiara and her friends starts calling Mai a fraud since there's no way someone at her age would be at Phoenix tier. Her friends agree and said Kiara is definitely better. Kaito could no longer handle her friends getting on their knees and stroking Kiara's ego, so he stepped in and told them to clean their mouths after all that munching they just did. The girls asks who he is. Kaito said, he's Justice. And he's here to put an end to the rumors that they're spreading about Mai like how she's a fraud. The girls reply that they aren't rumors if they're true. Yui cuts in and interrupts Kaito. The three girls <laughs> recognize it's Tengen Senpai. They start sweating since she'll absolutely take them all out. Kaito tells them to challenge Mai to a duel to see who's the real fraud. Kiara's friends backed down real quick and hid behind her back. However, they continue to be delusional and said Kiara is the goat. Then Kiara, who must have forgotten her meds, said she'll be overtaking Mai soon. It's then revealed that Kiara is at Raven Tier. Kaito is extremely frustrated on how much they're disrespecting Mai, so he challenges Kiara to a duel to see what she's truly made of. Yui panics, since Kaito is about to get his cheeks clapped. In a duel, the person who wins trades tears with the other. But in Kaito's case, since he's already at rock bottom, He'll simply be expelled from the school, but he's willing to take that risk for Mai. Kiara accepts his challenge with a big smile, since it'll be easier than cutting through a block of butter with a thousand-degree knife. The two got to the arena, and the boys thinks this is the beginning of our boy's harem project, where he defeat girls and add them to his collection. Kiara tells him if he wants to forfeit, now's the time, and she might actually forgive him if he apologized to her. But our boy said, nah, I'd win. Mai got to the scene and saw Kaito about to start throwing hands. The duel begins, and Kiara starts flying. She plans on toying with him for a bit and uses it as an opportunity to gain popularity. She throws down a single attack, and all of the sudden everyone thinks she's Gordon Ramsay and is cooking up a generational performance. They think she might be on equal footing with Mai. And when it comes to the milk cannons department, she also got a clear advantage over Mai. She uses her firepower on Kaito which he barely dodges, and he realizes it'll be best for him to stay directly under her so she can't hit her skill shots, while Kiara is oozing out liquids over the fact that everyone has their eyes on her. She was exposing her Calvin Klein's, which gave our boy a nice clear view of it. Kaido 2, girls Calvin Klein's 0. Kiara starts blushing, and she throws down a barrage of fire attacks, and her stands are getting real jealous that Kaito saw her Calvin Klein's, Yui gave some words of encouragement, but not even that can save Kaito because he's just constantly on the run. The principal asks Takizawa-sensei if Kaito is the guy with zero skills. She said yes, however, the tests indicates that he got the disposition for it. The principal found it strange since in the history of this school there's not been a student more unskillful than him. Our boy is really setting a new record here. Kiara thinks it's time to end the fight. But Kaito tells her to not get ahead of herself since she was throwing down her skill shots like a bronze player. 
Kiara lets him know that she's been purposely missing them for the audience to get excited. She then whips out her flame serpent, and it's Kaitover. Kiara charges up her attack for a maximum output, and the crowd starts clowning on Kaito. Then suddenly, Mai yells at everyone to stop yapping and just watch the duel. After hearing this, the students locked in and Kaito makes eye contact with Mai before she gets pulled away to complete her shoot. Kaito was surprised to see Mai doing all that for him. Meanwhile, Kiara is getting real heated since Mai just stole her spotlight. Kiara is done playing and she's about to explode our boy in ways he has never been exploded before. Kaito starts regretting his life decisions since he'll lose and be forced to leave the academy and he'll never be able to fulfill his promise to Mai. Then something clicked and he remembers that he said he'd win. Kaito will not go down as a fraud. Kiara's skills landed and everyone thinks our boy turned into dust particles like Thanos snapped him away. But as the smoke fades, Kaito is still standing without a single scratch. Everyone was surprised, and Yui thinks Kaito has finally awakened his magic ability. The teachers are confused, since they all also suddenly feel his magic. However, Kaito knows that in a split second, Kiara diverted the attack before it landed on him. Suddenly, Kiara turned real red and starts walking toward our boy. Then she starts twisting her body and turned into a water sprinkler as she splashes her water from her taco all over the stadium. Kaito is shocked, and she asks him to keep his eyes on her. She tells him to look into her eyes and call her a good girl. Kaito starts standing on three legs after seeing this, and the referee jumps in to stop this ungodly action. However, after looking at Kaito, the referee joined Kiara and exploded her pants with such strong stream of water. She jumps onto our boy and asks him to marry her. The principal got up and tells everyone to look away from Kaito's eyes, since he has the charm ability. And this ability could make girls spread their legs faster than Dom Toretto arriving to a family reunion. Now, the principal must not be very smart since she's staring directly at Kaito as she says this and ends up being hit by his magic. Now, this may look like jail time for our boy since she seems like a five-year-old. But don't worry because it's anime and she's actually 120 years old. The hot mommy who should detain me, I mean Takizawa Sensei, tells everyone it's over since even the principal can't hold herself back. All the students starts freaking out because Kaito is actually going to make a harem since he now wields the power called the infinite pussy glitch. Everyone starts trashing him, and Kato tries to explain himself that he was joking about wanting to gain a harem, but it was a lost cause. Yui Senpai's spirit floats out of her body as she hears this. From being a loser to being Mr. Steal Your Girl, all the girls and even guys in the school can't hold themselves back when they see Kaito. His ability has become a real issue. The principal brings Kaito in to have a serious talk, and of course she's tilting her head back otherwise demonetized things will happen. The principal is real pissed that Kaito used his ability on her and had her reveal her age. The principal has gotten into a discussion with the seven sages about the consequences of his ability. Kaito is shocked, since the seven sages are the strongest seven individuals in the magic-wielding community, and Mai is also one of them. They came to a conclusion to confiscate Kaito's ability, since he's pretty much using mind control on people like he's a hentai protagonist. Kaito panics, since it means he'll never be able to use magic again. However, the principal said there's no wiggle room here. Literally. She put a blindfold over his eyes and escorts him. He tries to negotiate with the principal, but the principal couldn't care less. Then his never-give-up spirit kicks in and the blindfold magically snaps off, making the principal fall deeply in love with him. She quickly undo her magic and asks Kaito to be her boyfriend. Then the principal starts crying because she's been affected by the I'm fucking single as fuck disease, and it's reached a point where it's no longer curable for over a hundred and two years which is understandable because any man who was going out with her would have cops pull up on them so fast. Kaito quickly runs away, and he meets with Kiara, who wants a rematch. Then once again, she starts drenching her Victoria's secret after looking at him. Kaito continues running, and he bumps into three girls, and of course they all also start tweaking and chase after him. The other students wonder what's going on when they see Kaito running away from a horde of hot 2D girls. They all looked at him, and Kaito unintentionally started the rumbling. If I lose it, I then one of them used their magic and locked Kaito in place. 
And it's completely over for our boy because he's about to be wrung dry and his balls will end up looking like raisins. Now, even the guys are after him. All the girls are fighting over him and they all really want to show him their juicy assets. Then someone uses a spell knocking all of them out. Kaito gets tied up and he realizes that this voice is Mai. He keeps his head down to make sure he don't turn Mai into another thirsty demon. She uses her teleport magic and he's now in a room with the seven sages. The principal tells them to quickly get it over with since it's dangerous for Kaito to be around. Then a girl got in front of our boy, and without even seeing her face, you can already tell she's an absolute mommy. Also, she's really testing the limits of the stretchability of those pants because, dear lord, those assets are about to bust through them. Her name is Moeka, and her ability is Captivate, something similar to Kaito's. But to be honest, she don't need magic to captivate me. Just those two destructive mommy milkers are already more than enough. She tells our boy that he's going a bit too far by using his ability on the entire school. Kaido lets her know that it's unintentional, since his ability came out of nowhere and he has no control over it. It was never his intention to have every girl thirst over him and sink the school with their fluids like it's the Titanic. Mocha asks if Hijiri heard all that, but he said it don't matter since he's still caused a great disturbance within the academy. Hijiri walks up to him, and as he's about to confiscate his magic, Mai comes in clutch and asks what does he want to become. She explains it isn't rare for one to cause a disturbance upon discovering their skill, but what they're concerned about is how he'll use his ability in the future. Mai gave an example like her wanting to become like Hayland, who's the strongest magic wielder in history. Kato recalls when they were kids, and how he used to talk about wanting to become strong like Hayland and made a promise with Mai to become as strong as him. He realizes that she still remembers their promise. Then one of them pushes Kaito's head down to make sure he doesn't activate his ability again. And Kaito yells out that his goal is to become one of the seven sages. He'll become the strongest wielder to ever walk the earth. They think he might have pushed his head down a bit too hard, and he got a concussion because there's no way bro's making it in the big leagues. Mai tries to come up with a proposal, but Mocha instantly uses her magic on Zenji and asks him to let this one go. Now Bro might look like an Ultra Chad, but when faced with man's biggest weakness, titties, he instantly folded and allowed this one to slide. Hijiri asks what's her plan. Moeka hugs Kaito and reveals that she'll be the one to teach him how to control his ability. And oh my god, look at those thighs. I want my head squashed between them so bad. She explains it's only natural to have trouble when you first discover your ability, and asks Mai to vouch for her. Besides, if they're against Kaito's ability, then that means they're also against hers. Hijiri says it's different since Moika is trustable, so she tells them to trust her being Kaito's mentor, give her one year, and if he's still unable to control his ability, then they can do whatever they want with him. She explains that she's able to relate with his troubles, that's why she'll be on his side and all she asks for is one year. Hijiri allows this since Moka is reliable, so they tell him to train hard and better himself with Moka. Hope filled Kaito since he still has a chance to become one of the seven sages and fulfill his promise with Mai. Moka grabs onto Kaito and said she's looking forward to it. Now somebody please find me a mommy like this, because I'm about to go insane if I stay single for a bit longer. Moka uses her teleport magic to bring them back to the academy, and Kaito asks why did she decide to help him. She thinks about it, and said she just went with the flow. She felt bad for our boy since he was out there getting cooked by everyone. Mocha tells him to head over to the clock tower since it has a really nice view, and as they're walking up the stairs, our boy had to fight the hardest battle of his life. Now Kaito must also have the power to resist magic powers, because right now, He's fully exposed to Moika's natural, captivating magic, and he's still able to calm down and look away. Moka explains how she discovered her ability at the age of 11 and would get dirty looks from other girls, and they would accuse her of stealing their boyfriends. And now that she meets Kaito, who's facing the same problems as her, she feels like helping him out. Not everyone in this world is blessed with magic abilities, so people who are magic wielders should consider themselves lucky. She explains that magic has made the world a more convenient place, but at the same time there are also people who use their abilities to commit crimes. She warns Kaito that if he ever uses his power to do evil, 
she will have to take him down. Then she hits him with the, with great power comes great responsibility, and she asks if he has what it takes to be a magic wielder. Kaito vows that he'll commit himself to wielding his ability righteously and with honor in order to become one of the seven sages. Moka smiled and starts finding ways for Kaito to show of his skills. She points out three students and tells him to make them wet. Kaito panics, since he might accidentally riz up the entire school. Moka lets him know it's fine since it'll be fun to watch either way. She then tells him to introduce them to her after he charms them, since she has a huge soft spot for adorable girls. Moika gave our boy lots of encouragement, and Kaito wonders what would happen if he lose control of his ability again. If that were to happen, he could also end up losing all his multiplying fluids. Moka starts floating him and tells him to stop yapping, otherwise she might reconsider this whole mentor thing. Kaito gets sent down, flying towards a girl like a torpedo, and he landed on a truly heavenly spot. The girl freaks out and realizes that Kaito is the creepy guy that charms people and she starts running away. Kaito realizes if he can't follow Moika's commands, she'll no longer be his mentor. So he starts chasing down the girl, and his choices of words are not the smartest, as the girl mistakes him for wanting to do devious things. Moika starts laughing at the entire situation, and Kaito pulls out his wallet and said he'll pay her for it. The girl couldn't handle this level of disrespect, so she sends him flying with her magic. Kaito lands in front of the two other girls, and he also starts chasing them down. The girls are running for their lives like rabbits escaping a wolf, because our boy is looking like a predator. Moika thinks our boy might be a lost cause, because even with his ability to charm women, he still can't bag a single girl. Then Kiara appears in front of him for another redemption arc. Kaito starts running away from her, and Moka tells him to bag her too since she's cute. Kiara acknowledges Kaito's ability, so she'll put on a blindfold and fight him blind. She uses her magic, and unfortunately, her name is not Gojo Satoru, so she can't see through her blindfold and start sending it the wrong way. Kaito tells her her magic is going the wrong direction, but she thinks Kaito is bluffing and ends up sweeping the three girls' clothes instead. Now the three girls might be legally blind because they blame this on Kaito, and they now see him as an enemy of all women. As they're all about to jump him, Kaito's ability comes into play, and they decided to jump on his yogurt sniper rifle instead. Kaito prepares to run, and he accidentally make eye contact with Kiara, who thought she won, so she's also affected by the charm. Kaito made a shot-for-shot -shot remake of the entire scene that unfolded earlier, and after seeing this, Mocha realizes his ability could spiral out of control quite quickly, so she jumps down from the roof and uses her magic on all of the students chasing Kaito. She put them all to sleep, and asks if Kaito's ability is active right now. He said no, because his eyes would get a little warm when it's activated. Moeka thinks this is amazing progress because the first step to being able to control his magic is to know when it's active and when it's not. And the best way to do this is to use it. So she tells him to be able to control his charm in a month, and for the remaining 11 months, they'll do something that'll catch the attention of the seven sages. Kaito smiled. Since at first he thought she's just a troll, but now she seems reliable. And he said he'll do it for sure. He'll become one of the seven sages. Then Yui appears and tells him to go meet her father to let him know that he finally got his magic ability. Moka starts blushing upon seeing Yui and asks Kaito to introduce her to her since she's really cute. Kaito and Yui arrived at her house to meet Yui's father. And he also has no idea what this charm ability is. But that don't matter since he finally got his magic ability. Kaito asks if this could pair well with his combat training. Yui's dad said, nah. Since with his charm ability, the only combat he'll be doing is gland-to-gland -gland combat. However, he is really proud to see Kaito finally gaining magic ability since he's been training with him ever since he was young. He got up and asks Kaito to show him his skills. Kaito starts panicking, and he accidentally uses his ability on Yui's dad. Then Yui's dad starts loving him like he's his actual son. The situation calmed down, and they're about to have dinner. Yui's dad compliments his magic ability and said no wonder it caught the seven sages' attention so quickly. Then Yui and her mother starts talking about how it feels like Kaito is slowly drifting further and further away from them. Just a few years ago, he would still rely on them for everything. Whenever Kaito scrape his knees as a child, 
He would always cry and run to her with little poop stains stuck between his booty cheeks asking for her help. Yui wonders, where is that Kaito now? Kaito starts getting embarrassed, and Yui and her mother said they'll always have his back. Kaito then wonders, even with his ability, will he be able to reach Phoenix Tear? Yui's dad lets him know he don't gotta worry about a thing, because ever since he was young, even though he didn't have any magic, he would always be the last man standing during training. He got the spirit and the determination, which is why he believes Kaito definitely has what it takes to become one of the seven sages. Yui and her mom said they'll be cheering for him, and if he ever gets hard stuck, he can always come back to them and they'll gladly welcome him with open arms. They finished their dinner, and as Kaito is taking a bath, Yui's dad talks about how happy he is for him. Then suddenly Yui calls her parents and said she has something to discuss with the both of them, and it's about Kaito. Kaito lays in bed and he's really worried about what lies ahead, but he remembers that Mai is still waiting for him to make it to the Phoenix tier, so he'll have to get in a good sleep and get back to training tomorrow. Then suddenly the door to his room opens and he feels something soft on his hand. He opened his eyes and oh my god, our boy is getting in a nice handful squeeze of Yui's soft milkers. He recoils back and asks her what's she doing here. Turns out Yui got that sleeper build chesticles because, oh man, I wasn't expecting her to be dual wielding such massive milk bombs. Yui explains she's here to get a glimpse of Kaito's sleeping face since he's really cute, but he went a bit too far. She apologizes for barging in like this and said she has something to talk to him about. Kaito got confused and she said there's something she wants him to take. She pulls a paper from her clothes and reveals that she actually planned to give it to him for a really, really long time now, but she just got her father's permission. Kaito wonders what's happening. Yui came to him in the middle of the night, and she got such a serious expression, he thinks this is where they kick him out of the house and throws him to the streets. As he opened the paper and read it, he was startled because it's a marriage registration form between Kaito and Yui. Our boy has never been more confused in his life, and Yui jumps onto him and lets him know that she's been in love with him for the longest time. Yui starts crawling to him, and oh man, this chapter is really testing my ability to make videos with one hand. Yui explains how the Tengen family isn't allowed to marry someone who can't use magic, but since Kaito just unlocked his magic ability, this is no longer the case. Kaito is freaking out since he always saw Yui as his older sister, he thinks it's the charm ability acting up, but no, this was Yui who was acting up. She revealed that she has always loved him ever since they were young, but her family tradition was the only thing that was stopping her from confessing. She's been so stressed about this that she's been filling out a daily marriage registration form. Kaito is still convinced that it's the charm, so Yui falls onto him and lets him know that this is the real her, and she's been waiting for this moment her entire life. She wants him to make her his wife. She then starts tearing up since she finally did it, and Kaito wonders if this is love or magic. Which one is it? I need this ability so bad. Huge thanks for all the members, even though all you get are feet pick emojis.